Hi everybody, my name is Darren and welcome back to another video review. Today's multimeter is the Voltcraft VC11. And before I get started, I just want to say thanks to uh, all of the kind comments and uh, users who have given me feedback, both positive and uh, negative, but feedback is great all the way around and I really appreciate all of your uh, um, best wishes and I want to wish everybody a, a very Merry Christmas because that's just a couple of weeks around the corner. Now uh, back to the multimeter itself, the Voltcraft VC11, it's a uh, CAT3 250 volt uh, multimeter. Um, it has something called battery test function, which it uh, puts a small load on the 9 volt and 1.5 volt batteries. Also has a uh, signal generator, which is a rectangle generator, um, feature of functionality built into it. It does voltage, AC DC, and it does ohms, also known as resistance, and has a separate diode check. So we'll be touching on some of the features and the uh, overall functionality of this uh, little multimeter. Now in terms of size, this guy is relatively tiny. If we compare it against the Anning 8008, uh, super popular multimeter right now, um, you can see size-wise it's uh, at least a third smaller and if we look at the uh, width it's also uh, definitely smaller uh, width wise alrighty so they say good things come in small packages well sometimes that's true the Voltcraft VC11 is definitely a, uh, a niche multimeter um, perhaps not everyone's cup of tea if you need something to throw into the glove compartment or your car this little guy is probably a, a half decent choice. Now, with all of the uh, multimeters that are in this size category, this one ships with the leads attached. Now that can be good and bad. Because there's no separate case with the VC11, you have to end up winding the leads around the meter. This can cause some uh, excessive wear on the probe ends at some point down the road. But generally speaking, the probes themselves, fairly, uh, not crazy long. I'd say they're probably about a foot and a half in length. Um, maybe a slightly longer would have been nice, but because there is no separate case, I think uh, this suffices quite well. Now, the one thing that's neat about this multimeter is the fact that the fuse is actually built in to the probe. So if we just unscrew the probe, There's the fuse. So that's a handy dandy um, feature. Um, it saves you having to actually open up the, uh, the meter to replace the fuse if you do happen to blow it. Um, so because of the size, uh, I think that's, uh, that's really um, neat. Okay, so what we're gonna start off with is the um, basic testing functionality. And what we'll do is we'll take out the um, good old 80, 584 voltage reference. And we'll just see how accurate the VC11 is in terms VC11, of uh, hooked up to the 8584 voltage reference. And uh, once again, this uh, multimeter is a 2000 count multimeter. multimeter. Um, it measures approximately 2.5 uh, times per second. And uh, uh, the overall accuracy um, in terms of DC voltage is plus minus 2.5% plus nine counts. So it's not going to be the most accurate meter on the market, that's for sure. Anyway, we'll take a quick look. And right now we're at the 10 volt setting, according to the 584. And the VC11 is showing as 9.98 volts fluttering back and forth, but we'll call it a 9.8. Heading down to 2.5 volts, the VC11 is showing us this 2.48. Taking it up to the 5 volt. VC11 is coming in at 498. And finally at 7.5 volts, the VC11 is showing us as 7.48. So well within tolerance, well within spec for the, uh, the, the rating on this multimeter. Yeah, in terms of the overall uh, voltage, uh, in this case, it's just fine. 
the VC11 also does a diode. So we will bring out a diode and we'll just see if we can measure the forward voltage drop. And now there is no audible indicator, so it's strictly a visual. Um, this meter does not do continuity. Um, so that being said, we have it switched to the diode setting. And let's just see if we can measure the forward voltage drop. And there we go. So yeah, so no problems there. Now, one of the caveats, because these leads are physically hardwired to this meter, is the fact that you just can't change probes. Um, I really wish they would have made the, uh, the tips themselves um, slightly longer in terms of the actual... Uh, probes. At least another half of an inch would have been nice. Um, you just don't have a lot of room to play with. Even when you're measuring, uh, you know, small devices with these probes, you have to sort of be bang on. Um, be really hard to do any sort of finite uh, probing or testing just because they are limited. Um, so that's too bad. Hindsight would have been really nice if uh, Voltcraft would have made the, uh, made at least another half inch so you have better better um, conductance and just a easier job at probing. Alrighty. So moving right along, we are now going to measure a 20 year old Radio Shack 9 volt battery. I have pulled this out of an old Radio Shack meter um, a few weeks back and uh, I had completely forgotten about this meter that I had that's uh, really old, almost 20 years old, actually just over 20 years old. And uh, suffice to say, when I pulled out the meter, um, I was pleasantly surprised to find uh, there was absolutely no leaking whatsoever. So, you know, people can say what they want about Radio Shack. It really is too bad that they're uh, going the way of the dyno because it was a niche market they had. and. Uh, I'm going to miss them. They closed in Canada quite a while ago. Um, I had gone down to Watertown um, last year to pick up uh, a few more electronic items before uh, they all closed up down in the States. But um, yeah, you know, they did have some good quality stuff. A lot of it was crap, but uh, there was some good bargains to be found. And uh, obviously when they made their batteries, uh, unlike a lot of the El Cheapos you'll get today, uh, be it at the dollar store, God forbid, if you buy your batteries at the dollar store. Um, anyway, this one stood the test of time and 20 years later, never leaked. So, uh, awesome. So we're gonna measure this battery today. And memory serves me correct. It should be showing around 3.8, 3.9 volts. So double check. And we're showing us 3.6, 3.55. So thereabouts. Now it's putting a small load on the battery. So uh, if you have a battery, obviously in this case, you couldn't use this battery now. It's completely um, gone. But uh, if you have a 9 volt battery that you might think is on the cusp of being garbage, it's nice to put it on the load and then you can see whether or not you're still around that 9 volt target mark. And uh, we've got some more life left in the battery. So that's a handy feature. I'm not going to measure the 1.5, but it's the same idea. It puts a small load on the, the battery itself. Now the uh, Volcraft VC11 also does um, uh, a direct current amp measurements uh, from 2000 microamps to 200 uh, milliamps with a plus minus 2.5% and once again a 9 count in terms of accuracy. Um, I don't know how many people that actually buy this would go ahead and measure um, current with it, but um, you have a little bit of a window there if, uh, if you need to do that. Um, it has the CE standard. I don't know um, how that is in terms of reliability these days. Um, this was shipped um, from the UK to Canada, so uh, it didn't come from China. Um, tend to get a little more, um, for whatever reason, it seems that uh, Chinese multimeters, when men, when they're being sent to uh, Europe, they tend to be um, better made. 
slightly better input protection, higher value rated fuses, probably because the uh, European standards are, are higher than uh, other parts of the world. Um, but what we'll do is we will turn this puppy around and we'll open her up and have a little look inside. As you can see, that's the manufacturing date, uh, July 2016. Okay, so we'll uh, have a quick peek inside. I'm gonna come right back. Okay, we've got the uh, back off. Uh, it was just two standard Phillips screws, um, plastic uh, threading, no metal inserts. Now, surprisingly enough, the um, there's quite a lot of shielding on the uh, the cover. Um, so that's that's really nice to see. Um, it uh, the shielding goes down the entire uh, cavity of the uh, multimeter. So uh, yeah, really good to see Volcraft. Uh, once we get into the inside of the multimeter, you see we've got those standard little batteries. Now some people love these types, other people despise them. Um, I'm sort of somewhere in between. They tend to, to be more expensive and a little harder to find sometimes um, when it comes time to actually change them. They are your uh, standard uh, LR44s, um, 3 volts. Um, but that being said, definitely when you have uh, batteries that are this tiny, you certainly can reduce the size of the PCB and the overall layout of the multimeter itself. Not to mention the weight. Uh, this multimeter weighs next to nothing. It's extremely light. So once again, uh, to throw it in your pocket, you wouldn't even know you have it on you. Here we see a trim pot. Um, you can actually calibrate this meter if you choose to do so, uh, at least in terms of the, the actual voltage. The manufacturing date on here, I'm trying to see if it was there. Uh, it's just a serial number. MS830 uh, A1. I assume that's the revision. 190205. That's just the serial number. Um, here we have the actual leads themselves. You can see they're soldered on. Um, half decent soldering job. The thing I do like about this is the fact that you've got this nice retention mechanism here. So the leads themselves, as you can see, you can wiggle and jiggle, as my wife likes to say. But the, uh, the wire connectors here aren't moving. So in terms of long-term long wear and tear, that's, uh, that's going to definitely help this uh, survive in terms of... Uh, the leads themselves having to be replaced. So really nice retention on the leads themselves. Okay, we have the uh, PCB completely removed from the casement now. And here we can see the uh, selector switch. Uh, the uh, two zebra stripes, AKA elastomars. That's what uh, makes contact with the headers here. And that's how you get your LCD display. So not too much else in there. Very compact assembly. Um, no threaded inserts, everything's um, plastic. A um, little bit of blast shielding, not, not a lot, mind you, but uh, it's a tiny bit there. Um, the plating itself, very clean. Uh, a little bit of flux residue. But not too much to this PCB, that's for sure. Um, really next to nothing in terms of input protection. Um, you're not really going to want to stick this. Anything high voltage. And Really not a whole lot. 
You might make use of the uh, the trim pot at some time down the road if you find out that it needs to be calibrated. So yeah, not a whole lot going on on the uh, PCB. Um, here we have the uh, resistor load for the, uh, the 1.5 and the 9 volt battery testing. Um, mostly SMD, some through hole, but uh, so there it is in a nutshell. Not a whole lot. Um, I am liking the um, the retention clip on the leads themselves, so uh, they should last a fairly long time before you'd have to replace them. Uh, sorry, before you'd have to replace them, rather. Okay, so we're going to uh, put this meter back together, and we'll come up with a uh, quick overview, and I'll give you my uh, overall impression. Closing thoughts on the Volcraft VC11. It's a great little multimeter. It's compact, ultra compact, and it's easily um, something you can put in your pocket or throw it in your tool case, or perhaps in the glove compartment of your car, and uh, it won't take up a lot of space. Keep it away from high voltage, you should be fine. My only caveat is the fact there is no separate compartment to remove the uh, small LR44 batteries. Um, that would have been nice instead of having to take off the entire back cover. But that being said, you shouldn't have to change the batteries that often, so it's not a really big deal. The leads themselves, I had mentioned previously, are nicely retained and they should last a fair amount of time. The selector switch as well, very good, nice quality feel. I don't see uh, any problems um, over the short term at least. Has a really nice uh, solid uh, grip uh, when you're changing. It is small, you can see. Um, I don't have super big fingers, but even for, for this device, um, it would have been nice perhaps if the selector switch was a tiny bit bigger, or at least the openings were. But that being said, um, uh, it, it's a great, uh, great quality uh, selector knob. Okay, so in terms of final rating, I'm going to give the Volcraft VC11 a solid 2.5 star. Till the next video review, I'm Darren Walker. Keep on testing.